Hello everyone. Today we will be starting with solving a system of equations. And the topic we're going to be covering today is using the method of substitution to solve system of equations in two variables. So first thing is, what is a linear system? In a linear system, there are more than one equation and also it has more than one variables. For example, 3x plus y equals 2 and x minus y equals 6. A solution to the linear system is always an ordered pair. It depends upon how many variables are present in the system, linear system here. So a solution to the linear system over here as there are two variables would be an ordered pair x and y that satisfies each equation in the system. Very important. It has to satisfy each equation in the system. Now for example, this linear system 3x plus y equals 2 and x minus y equals 6 has a solution the ordered pair 2 and minus 4. We are definitely going to check that. So let's go ahead, plug these in these two equations. So before I start, I always try to write, say the first is an equation 1, the second is equation 2, so that I don't forget that I have, you know, I have to solve for, uh, substitute this uh, ordered pair in both of them. So the first thing is I write equation 1, And so it's going to be 3 times, remember this one is x, and this is uh, minus 4. Okay. This one is x, and y is minus 4. So 3 times 2 plus minus 4 equals 2. So let's solve the left hand side 6 minus 4 equals 2 or 2 equals 2 good it satisfies it we know that now let's look at equation 2 now plug these values 2 minus of minus 4 equals 6 so the left hand side is 2 plus 4 equals 6 on the right and the left is now 6 equals 6 so yes, as we said that 2 minus 4 is a solution, that means it is going to satisfy both equation 1 and equation 2. Now let's do more problems. Now is the ordered pair 1 and 2 a solution to the linear system given below? Okay, so let 1 be x and 2 be y. So we have to substitute it over here. So it says 3. So before I said, let's write this to be equation 1 and equation 2. So for equation 1, we see 3 times 1 plus 2 should equal 2. So that means 3 plus 2 equals 2. 5 equals 2. Something does not make sense. 5 can never be equal to 2. So this first, this ordered pair is not only, is not even satisfying equation one. So we don't even have to bother and do equation two. Remember, if it is a solution to a linear system, it has to satisfy both the equations. Even if one of them is not satisfied, you just let it go. So therefore, we say one and two is not a solution. Okay. Let's look at another example. It says, is minus 10, 10, that's the ordered pair, a solution to the linear system given below? The linear system here is x plus y equals 0, 4x plus 3y equals 10. So the first thing we always do, write down equation 1, equation 2. It does not matter if you put, you know, if you flip-flop the equations, just make it short. I try to follow the way it is given, so making my life simpler. 
So the first thing we're going to do is this ordered pair. The first one is always x and the second one is y. That's by default we're going to assume. Okay, so now let's put it in equation 1. Is equation 1 satisfied? So it's minus 10 plus 10 equals 0. That's the right hand side here. And the left hand side when we solve 0 equals 0. Oh, good. It is satisfying equation 1. Let's look at equation 2. What do we get? 4 times minus 10 plus 3 times 10 equals 10. So we get minus 40 plus 30 equals 10. Minus 10 equals 10. Now that's not possible. So even though this ordered pair is only satisfying one of them, it's not satisfying the other. So here's an example. It satisfies one of the equation but not the other. So what do we say? Nope, this is not a solution. So now minus 10, 10. So uh, not, uh, okay, you know, we simply say this minus 10, 10 is not a solution. Okay, let's look at other equations. So here we would like to know is 2, 6 a solution to the system below? Okay, so one thing to remember is this is the system of equations. It's not a linear. Linear is a sense is when the variables only have power 1. So it's a mistake, guys, over here. So here is it a solution to the system? Okay, so that's what I'm here. So this is, is this a solution to the system? Below. Okay, so if this is a solution, now system means we have more than one equation. Okay, when I say the word linear, linear means I will have all the variables with power 1. So this one, guys, is, is 2, 6 a solution to the system given below? So the answer is a no. Oh, sorry, the answer is we have to check it. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. So let's go ahead and plug these values in the system. Uh, here is so equation 1, 2 minus 4 equals minus 4, so two, uh, 2 and 6, sorry, 2 minus 6 equals minus 4, minus 4 equals minus 4, yes. So this equation 1 satisfy, is satisfied with, by this ordered pair 2 and 6. Let's look at equation 2. It says 2 square minus y, that is 6, equals minus 2. So 4 minus 6 equals minus 2, minus 2 equals minus 2, and yes, this is a solution. Okay, now, so we have learned whether a ordered pair is a solution to a system or to a linear system. So once again, remember when I say the word linear system, I'm saying, let me go back and say things over here. So when I'm saying it's a linear system, Linear system, I'm referring to the scenario where the variable or all the variables have power 1. Okay. Okay, now the first, this was a linear system over here. Now we knew that the solution was 2 and minus 4. We would actually like to find the solutions on our own. So that's where the substitution method comes in. So let's go ahead and solve this linear system using the substitution method. Okay, so 3x plus y. So in the substitution method, you have to write one variable in terms of the other variable. Because if we have an equation, if you remember, let, let's start with a simple thing. So if I want to solve x minus 3 equals 2, so this means I want to solve this equation. That means find the value of x. So we clearly know the x is a 5 here. Now, as we have more than one equations and we're having more than one variables. So the idea is to solve for what ordered pair will satisfy this one. So you want to solve this linear system. In other words, get an ordered pair here. Uh, so what we do is, because we know if I have an equation and it has only one variable, we can easily solve for that variable. 
So what we normally do is we take one of the equations and write one variable in terms of the other and then solve, put that substitution value into the other. So I'm going to show you with the help of any, uh, you know, the steps here. Okay, so now it doesn't matter which one you want to use as a, which variable do you want to write in terms of the other and uh, which equation you want to get it from. So it's all in your hands, guys. What I prefer to do is I try to use the least, you know, the path of least resistance. So here when I'm looking at this one, it says, ah, this is much more easy. Let me use, use this one. So x minus y. So I'm going to write y in terms of x because I'm so used to having x's all the time. So I say from equation 2. Okay, Just make sure that you know which one you're taking from. From equation 2, we will write y in terms of x. Okay, this is like in the beginning, I'm just trying to write down all the steps and then make, you know, after that, it just becomes easy, which one you want to pick up. So from equation two, we have here x minus y equals six. And I want to have y on its own. We will write y in terms of x, as I said. So x, so here what we're going to do is take a um, minus six on both the sides. And we get x minus 6 equal um, minus y equals 0. And then plus y on both the sides, we get x minus 6 equals y. Okay? Okay. So once we have got that, we will replace the y in equation 1. So remember, when you're writing one variable in terms of the other from one equation, then you have to make the substitution in the other equation. You don't make this equation here because then you won't get the answers. You know, you want to get the value for x here. Now, okay, now this is the key here, guys. So what we're going to do is, first thing is, this is the first step. The second step is substitute y in equation 1. by y equals x minus 6. So we're going to put here the y with x minus 6. So let's see what we get. So in equation 1, what does equation 1 becomes? 3x plus y is now plus x minus 6 equals 2. So 4x, now minus 6 go on the other side is 8. x is now, so you divide by 4 on both the sides, you get x equals 2. So x is 2. Now, when x is 2, what would be y? So what we do here now is we put x equal 2 in the substitution we started with. This is the substitution in y equals x minus 6 to get the value for y. So what do you get? y is 2 minus 6 is minus 4. So the now the ordered pair, the solution to this one is an ordered pair. So the solution is given by an ordered pair, which is given by x and y, and our x is 2 and our y is minus 4. Okay? So this is exactly what we started. Remember when we started this um, uh, video over here, we said, okay, um, there's 2 minus 4 is a solution to this lender system. We just got, got and plugged the values and we found it was true. And now we're using a substitution method to actually find the solution. So let's do some more practice problems here. Now we're going to solve a linear system. Now remember linear system means the x's and the y's which are present in these equations have uh, powers 1. Okay. So here, the first thing is if I want to use the substitution method. So here I'm going to try to do is the, I'm going to replace x in terms of y. It does not matter, guys, what you do. It, it's just how you want to do it. Or you can have y in terms of x. Either way, it will go. So this time I'm going to do x in terms of y. So to show you which, uh, whichever way you choose, it's still going to give us answers. So I'm going to start with the equation 1 here. Okay. Uh, if somebody wants to do with y, go ahead and start with y. 
go and start um, and try to use those values where you do not have to have you know lots of uh, computation make your life simple guys okay so I'm going to pick up equation one so the first step I'm going to do is write x in terms of y from equation one okay so what do we get we have x plus 3y equals 6 or x is 6 minus 3y okay we can call this say hey the oh so this one now we're going to substitute this x in equation 2 so let's say this is equation 3 so the second step is substitute x which is given in equation 3 in remember we used the equation 1 so you have to go to equation 2 keep that in mind in equation 2 so what do you get equation 2 is what 2 times x so 2 times 6 minus 3y minus y equals 2 now just solve for y here now first distribute the 2 12 minus 6y minus y equals 2 so you take the 12 on the other side and this one is negative 7y equals 2 minus 12 or negative 7y equals negative 10 y is 10 over 7 okay so we have y equals 10 over 7 so we have to get now for the value for x so now So we're going to put y equals 10 over 7 in equation 3. Remember, we have to go back. Or you can put it in any of these equations. doesn't matter. You can put here equation 1, equation 2. It's fine, guys. It will still give you the same answer. Okay. So we're going to say x equals 6 minus 3 times y. So it is 6 minus 30 over 7. Find the least common denominator. So you multiply this by 7 and 7. So 42 minus 30, you basically get 12 over 7. So we have got the ordered pair. Remember, a linear system with two variables will have an ordered pair as the solution. So what is our solution? So the solution to this system is x and y, where x is 12 over 7. And y is 10 over 7. Now you can also check your answers to make sure that they are right. You, then you'll have to check your answers by plugging this ordered pair in both these equations. Okay, let's look at, so this is what we have found also, let, uh, one more thing guys. We have also found that if you have a linear system of equations, we have been able to get one solution. So this is called a unique solution. Now we're going to come across scenarios where they can have more than one solution. So let's look at an example like that. Okay, so here's a linear system and we will use the substitution method to get us solutions here. So first thing, equation one, equation two. And in this one, I'm going to work with equation one and write y in terms of x. So this time I'm going to write y in terms of x, okay? So the first step, the step is we're going to work on equation one. And write y in terms of x. OK, so I don't want this to be OK. So what do we get? We have x plus y equals 2, y is 2 minus 6. So let this be equation 3. Okay, second. Now substitute, or you can say put y equals 2 minus 6. Now remember we started with equation 1, so we have to put this in equation 2. In equation 2. Okay, so when we put this in equation 2, what are we getting? We have 2x 
plus 2y. 2y is what? 2 minus x equals 4. Okay, now just sub, uh, distribute the 2 inside. We have 2x plus 4 minus 2x equals 4. Okay, so what do we have? 2x plus 4 minus 2x equals 4. So this 2x cancels and 4 equals 4. So when you have this scenario where when you substitution, you exactly get what is on the right and the left hand side. This is a scenario where you will have infinite solutions. So when you're solving it and sub when you first write y um, in terms of say x and then you substitute it in the second equation and you get the left hand side equals the right hand side. Basically, it simply says that in terms of and there is no x's or y's available. In other words, only constants are kind of present. So here you say this is the scenario where there are infinite solutions. So now we have come across a scenario for linear system where there are infinite solutions. Okay. Okay, now let's look at another scenario where we will have no solution because you can have no solutions also. Okay, so let's look at this scenario. So once again, we have equation 1 and equation 2. So what we're going to do is put y. So for, I'm going to work on equation 1. Or rather, I'm going to work on equation 2. Remember, in equation 1, both uh, x's and y's have some coefficients. And I don't want to deal with, you know, um, what do you say? I don't want to deal with uh, any kind of fractions. So I prefer to look for that equation where I do not have to have fractions. And I realized, oh, the um, equation 2 is wonderful because y has coefficient 1. You know, you have to be thinking very you know, look at the bigger picture, make your life simpler. That's the biggest thing. Make your life simple. Try to write, uh, pick up that equation where you will not have to deal with fractions. So here I'm going to deal, work with equation 2. And also I will work with y, not 2x, because x has a coefficient minus 2. So I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to pick up y. So I'm say, then write y in terms of x. So what do we get? y. So this one is minus 2x plus y equals minus 5 or y equals minus 5 plus 2x. So that's my first step. Second, and this is, we can say it's equation 3. So second step is what? The second step is put this y from equation 3. Now remember we started with equation 2, that means we're now going to go to equation 1. So we say put y equals minus 5 plus 2x in equation 1. So that's what we're doing. Okay. So let's put y minus 5 plus 2x in equation 1. What's equation 1, guys? So in this one, we have 4x minus 2y equals 3y is not going to be replaced by minus 2 minus 5 plus 2x equals 3. What do we get here? 4x. Now substitute, uh, distribute 2, negative 2 plus 10 minus 4x equals 3. The x's cancel out. You have 10 equals 3. That's no way possible. So notice in this problem of this learner system, when we were uh, substitution, substituting y in say, equation 1, we found that the variables were cancelled, but then we found that uh, there are two different values on either side of the equal sign. This is a scenario where there is not going to be a solution. There is no solution. So I'm going to show you some things which is very important that if you have a linear system, let's be very clear, if you have a linear system, okay, in a linear system, I'm going to, you will see that there's a possibility of no solution, okay, in the previous example, this linear system had infinite solutions, and in the example before that, this linear system had one solution, we call it a unique solution. 
So I'm going to write down what we have learned is that whenever you have a linear system, linear system, very important, when you have a linear system, there are three possible scenarios. So let me write this one. In a linear system, I'm not saying a system, I'm saying in a linear system, there are solutions and there are only three possible way, ways you have solutions. There are on, only three possible solutions. First one is one or we say a unique solution. There's only one solution. There's no other solutions. In this scenario the graph kind of looks like two equations and they come out like this. Okay, let me just show you here. So suppose there are, this is how a graph would look like, okay? So this is my x and y. So if it is a unique solution, guys, so if this suppose is equation one, and suppose this is equation two. So this is the unique solution. This is the solution. This is a scenario how it looks like. There will be one point where these two equations will crisscross nobody else. Okay, the second is the scenario where there are infinite solutions. In other words, there is, in this scenario, there's only one line. Equation one and equation two basically just mesh with each other. So this is how a graph looks like. So this one, this is how a graph, this is my x and y. In this one, the equation one is the same as the equation. So this is equation one is exactly mirroring equation two. They're basically, there's only one line. You cannot see anything else. And the third scenario is no solution. No solution means there is no way these two equations will or these equations, remember a graph of an equation is a line, these two equations or lines will never, you know, cross each other. So in this scenario, this is how a graph looks like. So this is my x and y. So what you're going to see is, if I have an equation 1 like this, so if this is equation 1, then my equation 2, guys, is a line which is going to be parallel to it. So whenever you see the scenario of having no solution, that means the equations which are given to you, they are parallel to each other in terms of graph. If you have infinite solutions, there is only going to be one line. And if you have a unique solution, that means these two lines will crisscross each other at exactly one point. And this, guys, is very important when you are looking at the linear system. I'm saying a word, I'm repeating again, it's a linear system. Not the word system, but linear. Okay, now let's do a little bit more examples uh, of a little, um, a little difficult level. Now here, we're not having nice little integers. So here's the says, let's solve the linear system using the substitution method. Notice the first equation has decimals, 0.2x plus 0.5y equals um, 8. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, so this is my equation 1 and equation 2. Now equation 2 is happy. It's x plus y equals 20, all nice little integers. But when you have decimals, the first thing I normally do is remove the decimals and then go ahead and solve it. So in order to remove this one, it is only one number after. So, so in other words, let's show you something here. So if you have 0 0.2, 0 0.2 is the same as writing as 2 over 10. So, and then 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is the same as writing 5 over 10. So if I multiply this equation by 10, then 0.2 will basically become a 2. So what I'm going to do is, so let's look at equation 1 first, make it a much more nicer looking. So 0 0.2, so 
So this one equation is now 2 over 10x plus 5 over 10y equals 8. I don't want fractions. So what do you do? You multiply this whole equation by a 10, which is a common factor here. So what do you get here is, the now equation is 2x plus 5y equals 18. So this is the equation. This is the same equation as 1, but now I'm making my life simpler because I want to have numbers not dealing with decimals. So this is my equation 1, and the other equation remains the same. It's the same equation, it's just that I'm making my life simpler. So now I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to work with these two equations. Okay, so in the substitution method, what do we do, guys? We will, first thing is we will um, put, I'm going to work on equation 2 because it's much more easy as you see that over here. So from equation 2, so here is the equation I'm looking at. Equation 2, I get which is equation 2 is x plus y equals 20 or y is 20 minus x. As I'm getting the, um, you know, substituting y from equation, uh, getting y in terms of x from equation 2, so I have to substitute this y in equation 1. So this is equation 1 I'm working at, guys, no longer this equation, okay? Second, so put y equals 20 minus x in equation 1, which is an arrow here. So I'm looking at this equation. So I have a 2x plus 5 times 20 minus x equals 80. So now I'm going to solve this one. So 2x plus 100 minus 5x equals 80. Um, solving this minus 3x and taking the 100 on the other side, 80 minus 100 uh, minus 3x equals minus 20. x equals 20 over 3. Okay, once you get x, you get, need to get the uh, ordered pair. Remember the solution here? So that when the solution here is x and y, your x comes out to be 20 over 3. Now the next job is find y. You substitute back in this equation, say we call this to be equation 3. So to find y, you say y equals 20 minus x, which is 20 minus 20 over 3. Uh, which is now have a common denominator. This will be 60 minus 20, 40 over 3. And that's what you write down. So when you're finding solution values, guys, let the fraction be a fraction. I am not looking for decimals, try. Okay? Now, one last example. And here we will have a system of equations. It's not the linear, guys. Remove this linear. It's not linear. Rather, it's a system of equations. Now, in this one, why is it a system? Because you have one of the equations with the variable x having a power 2. So if I want to solve this equation, I will do the same procedure as I was doing earlier. So the first thing we say is, hey, this is equation 1. This is equation 2. Now, first step is write y in terms of x. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use the y. I'm going to use it from the second equation. So I say from equation 2, x squared plus y equals 2, y is 2 minus x squared. So this is equation 3. So this y equals 2 minus x squared will be plotted in equation 1. So the second step put y from equation 3 in equation 1. What do we get? x plus 2 minus x squared equals 4. Okay? So what do we get over here? So here we are having minus x squared. Get all the terms. So it's, it's a quadratic equation. You can see that. Plus x plus 2 minus 4 equals 0, minus x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. I want to solve, if I can write in terms of, you know, get the minus out of the x squared in the front. So I say minus x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. So let's multiply by minus 1. We get x squared minus x minus 2 plus 2 equals 0. And now we can easily factor it out. This is x 
uh, minus 2 and x plus 1 equals 0. So in here we will have two values of the solution because once is now zero factor property that means x is 2 or x is minus 1. So if x is 2 what is y? If x is minus 1 what is y? So for this one what is y? 2 minus 2 square which is 2 minus 4 minus 2. So one solution would be 2 minus 2. Now let's look at x equals minus 1. So when x equals minus 1, what do we have? y equals 2 minus of minus 1 square, which is 2 minus of 1, which is 1. So the solution here, guys, is minus 1, 1. So this system, guys, has two solutions. 2 minus 2 and minus 1 and 1. Now this is a scenario where we do not have a linear system. Keep in mind. So when you have a linear system, right, guys, always there is going to be three possible ways of a solution. Unique, one, a unique, no solution or infinite solutions. But the moment you do not have a linear system, you cannot guarantee what kind of solutions you will see. Okay? So, thank you guys.